Welcome to Healthy Habits. We are so glad you found us. Here at Healthy Habits, we are dedicated to helping you live your healthiest and happiest life. Our channel is all about sharing practical tips and advice for improving your nutrition, staying active, and maintaining a healthy lifestyle. Whether you're looking to lose weight, boost your energy levels, or just feel better overall, we've got you covered. Our team of experts will provide you with the latest research and recommendations for living a healthier life. So join us on this journey to better health and wellness. Subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell to stay updated on all of our latest videos. We can't wait to share our healthy habits with you. The best way to cure toenail fungus. Toenail fungus, also known as zonochomycosis, is a fungal infection that affects the toenails. It can cause the nails to become thick, yellow or discolored, brittle, and distorted in shape. The infection often starts as a white or yellow spot under the nail and can spread to the entire nail if left untreated. Toenail fungus is mostly caused by yeast, mold and fungus. There's one particular one called the dermatophyte which is a fungus. These fungi are able to invade the keratin in the nails and cause an infection. The dermatophytes that cause nail fungus thrive in warm, moist environments, making the skin and nails of the feet prime targets for infection. Most pathogens love sugar and so do nail fungus and this explains why we get more of the fungus in our toenails than we do on the hands because the nails are very similar in both places but on the toes it's further away, so the circulation is worse and also because our hands are mostly out in the open and our toes are mostly enclosed in a dark moist environment. We also need to know you cannot heal a nail, you have to get rid of the old and grow out a new one. For the hands they grow a whole lot faster. It could take about 3 to 6 months whereas on the feet it could take a lot longer ranging between 6 to 18 months. But you have to know this could be influenced by your age, your health, your circulation and your eating habits. Healthy eating habits make you less attractive to pathogens. People with uncontrolled diabetes often have high levels of sugar in their blood, which can make it easier for fungi to grow and cause infections, including toenail fungus. Additionally, people with diabetes may also have reduced blood flow to their feet which can slow the healing process and make it more difficult for the body to fight off infections. Toenail fungus can also make blood sugar control more difficult for people with diabetes. When the skin or nails are infected, the body's immune system has to work harder to fight off the infection, which can cause blood sugar levels to rise. So you want to lower blood glucose levels if they are high because these pathogens love sugar. They're not feeding directly off the sugar that you're eating, they're feeding off your bloodstream. It's the blood sugar that is being delivered to all the tissues that's what they live off of. Also you want to trim your nails and keep them nice and short because if they're long then there will be this space underneath where you get all kinds of dirt and debris trapped. This will provide a breeding space for these pathogens. Also make sure you keep it straight because if you get too much into the corner you tend to get ingrown toenails so now you get more infections. It can be a good idea to brush underneath your nails using a toothbrush this will help clear out some of that dirt and also make sure you dry your nails. Wearing shoes all day creates a perfect environment for these fungus to thrive so what you need to do is make sure you get several hours a day where you go bare feet, if possible outdoors so you can get some sun exposure. When blood flow to the feet and toes is limited, it can cause the skin to become dry, thick, and crack, which makes it easier for fungi to penetrate the nails. To build a new nail we need circulation to deliver nutrients and blood and oxygen and all the things that we need to create new tissue. The best way to jumpstart your circulation is doing aerobic exercises. They include running, cycling, swimming, or brisk walking. They help improve blood flow by increasing the heart rate and causing the blood to circulate more efficiently. During aerobic exercise, the muscles require more oxygen, which signals the heart to beat faster and pump more blood. In addition to increasing the heart rate, aerobic exercise also helps improve blood flow by promoting the dilation of blood vessels. The increased blood flow and oxygen delivery to the muscles during exercise triggers the release of nitric oxide, a molecule that helps relax blood vessels and increase blood flow. This increased blood flow helps deliver oxygen and nutrients to the muscles and other tissues, which can help improve overall health and reduce the risk of certain medical conditions. You can also do breathing exercises and meditation. Breathing exercises, such as diaphragmatic breathing or alternate nostril breathing, can help increase the amount of oxygen in the blood which can improve circulation. During deep breathing, the lungs are filled with a greater volume of air, which can help increase the amount of oxygen in the bloodstream. The increased oxygen delivery to the tissues and muscles can help improve overall health. Meditation, such as guided meditation or progressive muscle relaxation, 
can also help improve blood flow by reducing stress and promoting relaxation. When the body is relaxed, the heart rate slows down, blood vessels dilate, and blood flow increases. Everything in your body has to do with resources. Everything that happens depends on a resource and these resources have to be allocated. There's something called the autonomic nervous system, ANS. It is a division of the peripheral nervous system that regulates the automatic functions of the body, such as heart rate, blood pressure, digestion, and respiratory rate. The ANS operates unconsciously and is responsible for maintaining a balance between the body's functions and its external environment. It has two branches, the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system, that work together to regulate the body's automatic functions. The sympathetic nervous system is responsible for the fight or flight response, which prepares the body for physical activity and stress. The parasympathetic nervous system is responsible for the rest and digest response, which helps the body relax and conserve energy. The ANS constantly monitors the body's functions and makes adjustments as needed to maintain a state of balance, or homeostasis. For example, if the body needs more oxygen, the ANS can increase heart rate and blood pressure to deliver more oxygen to the tissues and muscles. If the body is under stress, the ANS can activate the sympathetic nervous system to prepare the body for physical activity or stress. So when we have a sympathetic response, stress response, we increase blood pressure and we constrict blood vessels and the parasympathetic does the opposite of constrict which is dilate. So the vessels widen the blood vessels and let more blood through. If you sit down and breathe 5 seconds in and 5 seconds out your hands and feet. will warm up because of vasodilation. Parasympathetic also handles your immune function so in order for you to have a strong immune system you need to lower the stress levels. There are also a few things you can do for short term benefits. Soaking your feet you can use Epsom salts or apple cider vinegar. This helps in softening up the infected toenail and also has some kind of chemical compound that fungus doesn't like. Tea tree oil has been used as a natural remedy for toenail fungus due to its antifungal and antiseptic properties. To use tea tree oil for toenail fungus, you can mix a few drops of tea tree oil with a carrier oil, such as coconut oil or olive oil, and apply the mixture to the affected toenail. You can also add a few drops of tea tree oil to a warm foot bath and soak your feet for 20 to 30 minutes. You can also use garlic or oregano. To use garlic for toenail fungus, you can crush a few cloves of garlic and mix with coconut oil to make a paste. Apply the paste to the affected toenail and wrap it with a bandage. Leave the paste on overnight. Oregano oil has also been used as a natural remedy for toenail fungus due to its antifungal properties. To use oregano oil for toenail fungus, you can dilute the oil with a carrier oil, such as coconut oil or olive oil, and apply the mixture to the affected toenail. You can also add a few drops of oregano oil to a warm foot bath and soak your feet for 20 to 30 minutes. In summary, toenail fungus is a common and potentially serious condition that can affect people of all ages, but especially those with diabetes or a weakened immune system. With proper preventive measures and prompt treatment, however, toenail fungus can be effectively managed. Thank you for watching this video on healthy habits. We hope you found the information helpful and are motivated to make positive changes in your own health and wellness journey. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest videos. We post new content every week, so there's always something new and exciting to learn. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. We love hearing from our viewers and always do our best to respond to your comments. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.